mortgage insurance is insurance on the loan uh, is insurance on the loan to the lender when someone doesn't have 20 percent to put down on buying a house it's private mortgage insurance exactly it's PMI. yeah and if you put if you got if you got the equity in you don't have to do it you don't have to buy that but um if you don't have equity in you have to get it you have to right. get that yeah and you're saying they're pulling out of that now yeah, I mean, if you have, if you don't have a 680 score, the conventional loans, the mortgage insurance companies are saying no. We're not providing the uh, the mortgage insurance. And at one point, uh, people were kind of banking on that because that was helping them. Yeah, two weeks ago, you could get it. I mean, if you had a 590, you could get a you could get mortgage insurance because they would go by level. Well, where a lot of that is coming from is from the fact that a lot of these mortgage insurance companies, the guys that are writing the insurance policies, I mean, they, they're having a lot of pressure on them in the market as far as downward pressure on stock prices and their earnings have been down. Mm -hmm. um, and the problem is, is these guys are starting to jack up, you know, their, their, their requirements on how they do this, this mortgage insurance. And it's because hard. a lot of these defaults are coming from these people with low credit scores. So, I mean, there's a lot of changes that are coming down the pipe. Wow. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. Well, the, the unfortunate thing is that people that have been working on their credit that have mediocre credit, you know, 620 to 680, that's still average credit. And those people that have worked on their credit that went from a 560 and now have worked on their credit, they have a 640, and they, they've been in the house maybe a year or two, they're still in a bind. Oh, wow. And it's working, um, against, it's working against what the mortgage broker told them originally. Is that you could go in and get a loan, you know, and over maybe the first two years while that loan was fixed, right. you could work on your credit, and then you get another loan because because your credit score would come up. Well, now they don't change the rules. It's, it's not working like that any longer. So, Mary, where do we go from here now? Where where do uh, us mediocre credit people go? I mean, can we get a house? What do we do? You can get a house. But the best thing is to talk to a mortgage consultant, sit down, look at the credit, and see what things. Uh, will help increase that score to a 680 and above. And there are a lot of things that can be done. I mean, sometimes it's just a matter of paying down credit cards, yeah. uh, you know, to a lower balance. It might be a matter of uh, settling some collections, disputing some collections. It's really about focusing on the credit, making sure that everything is accurate on the credit, and doing some things to jump that score up uh, into the 680 and above. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. Appreciate you, baby. All right. Bye, that's Mary Gutierrez, as she works at the Mortgage Hotline. All right. And uh, uh, we were talking about that the other day, and I was like, you need to share that with the audience, because, you know, people working on cleaning up their credit, and they get it to a certain uh, place where we were told this can get you in a house now, only two weeks ago. That's well, not I mean, there's that. just been a lot of changes in the market. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's just been a lot of changes in general, um, and, I mean, there's just going to be tighter credit now. Um, which is going to have an impact on our economy. It goes back to what I said before, those tax rebate checks that they sent out aren't going to make a difference at all. And in fact, most statistics are even showing right now that they have not made a difference because most people have used those tax rebate checks to pay on bills or they even either save the money. Only 9% of the population that are, that are receiving those checks have reported that they're actually going to go shopping for them. Angela, I have a question. In the news, I just got up. Wall Street welcomes reports that the central bank is pumping an additional $200 billion into the banking system. What does that mean to us? Well, it, it, well, what it means to you as far as, I mean, when you look at tighter credit, if they can put more liquidity into the system, if they can help the banks feel like the market is a little more liquid as far as money goes, then they'll feel like they can loan money out. So they would relax some of these tighter requirements that are being put in place. That's the theory that that's how it would work. Mm -hmm. um, something like that really takes a little while for it to trickle down to the end consumer. It normally takes about 12 to 18 months for, for the end consumer to really feel the impact of those kind of injections. And okay. even the rate cuts, it takes about 18 months for that to really trickle down to the consumer for you to really feel the effects of the rate cut. Now, originally, originally, they gave them $100 billion, and then they stepped it up to $200 billion. Why is that? Did you? They said that it was just um, really just to have a psychological impact. Really, it's not going to make a difference. They said that it's really going to continue to be the same um, in that pre-recessional kind of feeling that we're already in. But it's not really going to make that much of a difference. I mean, that's accurate. I mean, really, it's just helping the banks to have a perception that there's more capital available. If they have the perception that there's more capital available, they'll feel more comfortable about loaning it out. Mm -hmm. 
So that can actually help us with yeah, it mediocre can. It credit can. people. It can. Well, it I, can. I don't know if it would. I'm not sure if it's going to help the people with Thank mediocre credit. credit. I, I think honestly, right. it, it's going to be quite some time. You know, maybe another good 24, 36 months before someone with mediocre credit would be in a position where they could buy a house. Wow. It's going to be a while. That is scary. That is so jacked so all up. All this man. feel good kind of yeah, lovey so dovey stuff that the federal, the federal government's doing is really not. Well, I mean, it's probably not having the impact that you guys think it is, but it, it is helping the system. You know, I mean, e from an economic standpoint, I don't want to have an it's helping corporate. I don't want to have the, I don't want to have an economics class on the air, but it is helping the system. It's helping it corporate America. No, it's not help, just helping corporate America. Yeah, weird, I mean, man. it's helping the end consumer. It is. My lips are turning up on the side. Yeah, like. kidding. I don't see that. <laughs> hey, Buster, I just get in on what you guys are talking about. Go ahead, baby. Okay, this is what I have to say. I'm a real estate paralegal, so I see this stuff all the time. Okay. Um, and what Danielle was saying with it being a buyer's market, people are so desperate to get out of these adjustable rate mortgages, do all this stuff. They'll pretty much sell their house for whatever they can to break even or just be done with it altogether. But also, the problem, I guess, that I have is with, when are we going to hold the, you know, people that are in foreclosure going to... When are we going to hold them accountable? Because you know how much money you make each month. You know what you can afford and what you can't Amen. afford. Amen. Don't go out there and buy a two hundred fifty thousand dollar house when you only afford one hundred and twenty or one hundred eighty. Amen. Two calls. You know. <laughs> Amen. Amen. People do it in my neighborhood, and I am upset about it because I just found out even in our neighborhood we had some of the foreclosed, and right. how about it makes our house our houses the value goes down when they mess up. It, it mm, upsets it will, me yeah. because I'm also, um, I'm 26, um, me and my fiance just bought our first house last September, and we knew what we could afford, and we got what was in our means. Um, right. You know, it's a starter home, it was in, matter of fact, it was in foreclosure, um, you know, it was a HUD house, we paid 106, our, you know, with the values 124, we have instant equity, it's just stuff like that that I think we really need to be educated on, and a lot of people need to take first time home buyer in our class. And, and see, she just hit on a big point. I mean, a lot of the people that have been buying houses, and especially a lot of the people that were buying houses on the tail end, they, they just weren't educated. They, right. they didn't know what was going on. They hadn't taken the proper classes. No one Thanks. had educated them. Now, now, you can look at that from two sides. I mean, you can say, well, no one educated them, but you can also right. say they never took the initiative to exactly. educate themselves. So, for, exa for example, I'm not going to buy a car if I don't know how to drive it. Thanks. So why would you buy a house if you don't know how to operate? So don't, so don't drive that. Don't yeah. buy a stick and you can't drive. It. Exactly. exactly. Thank you. Let, me, I, let, let I me ask. Mean, you it, 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 it's you know, to see yeah. all this. Let um, me ask you something. Let me ask you some, sweetie pie. Let me ask something okay. real quick. Um, okay. Is it any uh, place you can uh, refer people to to take these classes? Where where can we take these classes? Let me let you know. I'm actually a paralegal in Durham. But um, my law firm actually goes to um, the attorney, uh, the attorney John Perry, and he actually holds classes um, at a church in Durham, and he actually gives a discount for um, attending the classes if you let him know, if you use him for the attorney. I would tell people, call around to the law firm in, you know, the Greensboro, the Triad right, area, right, ask right. them, do you have first-time home buyer classes? Where can I attend, you know, to get that stuff? Because the attorneys will come out, and he goes through everything, from the We're time good. that you sign the contract to the very end, until you put the keys in your hand. Good stuff. I mean, well, thank you so much for sharing, sweetie. You're welcome, and everybody have a good one. We you will. Too. Thank you for okay, the call. Thanks. All right, sweetie All right. pie. Al and I, what did Buster, this past Saturday on Community Focus, we had a, that was our topic. We talked about affordable housing. Um, and a good um, entity you may want to check out is Partners for Home Ownership. Um, not only will they help you get into classes and learn more about credit management and how to manage a house, but they also help out with down payment assistance. Mm -hmm. So if you're a first-time home buyer and you want to get down payment assistance, you can go to Partners for Home Ownership, and they're in Winston-Salem. Now they do have. A